Hey, it's Ben here, and here in this tutorial, we're going to have a look at how we set up this nice slanted bulleted list in Adobe InDesign. Now, if you're setting up lists in InDesign, then you'll know that if you try and wrap text with a list attached to your kind of paragraphs, then some strange things can happen if you tried that out before. So we're going to have a look at how we set this up nice and smoothly, all within a paragraph style, so you can repeatedly use it in different documents. So we're going to go up to File and New, and we'll create a new document. And we'll jump into print here. We're gonna set up a letter size document. We'll make it landscape, just one page, no facing pages, and hit create. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our image in there on the left-hand side. A Couple of tips in here as we set this up. So we'll go to file and place, or command and D, and then we're gonna grab this image of a meeting. And we'll just stretch this out and what we want to do with this uh, image is I want to actually get these two shaking hands at about the same angle we're going to have our text flowing at. So to do that, I'm going to click on the circle in the middle and that is going to allow me to then rotate this. So I'm just using the selection tool for the moment and we'll just keep rotating this and that looks like a good angle for our shaking hands. So now we'll just grab our text frame and we'll make this a bit smaller and uh, somewhere around here is going to be good. So we'll pop this up in the top left corner and I'm going to use a shortcut here and it's going to be command and shift as I stretch this out and that is going to keep it in proportion and also mean it's going to enlarge from the top left there and I'm going to go a bit bigger than this canvas. Actually I'm going to rotate this just a touch more so we'll zoom out here and we'll just come to the corner here move this round and we'll hold down shift and just enlarge that a little bit more. That's looking pretty good. We'll move this up and across a bit so we get those shaking hands a little closer to where the, the text line is going to be. So now I'm going to grab my direct selection tool and just change the shape of this frame a little bit. So I'm going to add my slant in here and we'll move it a little bit more to the left. That's looking pretty good. So now we're gonna add our outline to this shape. There's a couple of little tips in here as well. So we'll go back to our selection tool, select our shape. And for this, we're gonna to go to window and stroke, just because we need some of those options in the stroke panel rather than just in the properties that we have up here on the top right. So first thing is we'll add a stroke in here. We'll just increase the width of it until we're happy with it. And you can see here when I'm adding that stroke, it's actually coming into the picture here. Now I could enlarge this so that it's outside the edge of my frame. I just really want the line across on the right hand side there. Or I can change the alignment of the stroke from center um, to the outside of that box. And I may still wanna increase the size of this frame just a little bit, just so we move away from the edge of our page there. So command and zero or Control and zero to come back to the full screen. And now we're gonna add our text frame. So we'll actually come up to our type and I'm gonna stretch out a text frame from here to here. We'll add a little bit of a title in here and we'll format that a bit later. And then for the rest of this text frame, we're just gonna fill this with placeholder text. So I'm gonna to come to my type options, down to the bottom we'll fill placeholder text and we'll kind of format this into our list in a second. So we're gonna delete some of this text. We definitely don't need all this text. We're gonna make it a bit bigger as we move on. And then we'll highlight all of this and we'll come up to our bullets here. Okay, so at the moment uh, we just have one bullet down here and it looks like our bullet at the top here is hidden by the, the black of this line. So let's just add in a few more bullets. So we're gonna make some more line breaks here. And that should be good. So if we come back to our image, you can see now if I come to my text wrap and get the text to wrap around the object shape, we get some strange things happening with the, the list here. So I'm gonna highlight this and we'll come to the options for our text wrap and we'll just increase the, the wrap here and you can see the list 
quite quickly kind of falls apart. So basically we get this line along the left. So for our bullets here in our text frame, if we highlight all of these, if we come into the options for our bullets, we make sure I turn my preview on here so I can preview what I'm looking at. And you can see when I increase the left indent here, the list doesn't really like to slant in this way along that line. So we're not really going to get what we want um, from playing around with these options as we can with a, a kind of straight left hand edge there. So we'll cancel out of this. We're going to kind of go back to the, the drawing board with this. So we're going to come into our type and paragraph styles and we're going to work in these. We'll create a new paragraph style and we'll call this bulleted list. So we've got our bulleted list set up here and before we go in and kind of make some modifications to this, the one thing we need to do is grab our direct selection tool. Um, the wrap really won't work to kind of make this slanted list. So we're going to select the top left corner and we're going to stretch that out. And then we're going to come to the bottom left corner and we're going to match the edge there of our slanted line. So once that's done, I'm going to come to my object here. We are going to turn off the text wrapping and we'll start to see now that this text frame works a bit better. So I'm going to go into object text frame options and then we're going to change the inset space. I'm going to make sure preview is turned on and we'll click OK. So that's kind of keeping this away from the edge of that black line. We'll click away from this so we don't format the title there as well. We'll go into bulleted list and then we're going to go into our indents and spacing. We've got that left indent and first line indent which is fine and then if we come to our bullets and numbering option we're going to replace this tab with an M space. So basically an M space is normally the width of an M in your type. Um, so rather than using a tab to space things we're going to use this M space. Okay and you can see straight away we get that nice line up. So the tab is part of what's causing the problem because a uh, tab is almost a very grid-like spacing within that document so the text doesn't really know where to start. So once that M space is in there we can modify the left indent. You can see we keep that nice slanted line and we can move the bullet away um, and then also kind of keep playing with this. Okay. If we come to indents and spacing um, you can see we've got that kind of left in, indent option and we just need to work with our type to find out where the, the right spot is um, for this. So you can see here as we increase it and as we decrease or increase that line we eventually get those things lined up. So the bullet isn't really moving away from the text there. In order to do that using the M space we would literally have to come in here and add in another M space and that will move the bullet a little bit further away and then we can play with our alignment here again. Okay, So let's go to indents and spacing. We're going to change the space after to add a bit of space between our bulleted list and then we'll come to basic character. We're going to change this to Myriad Pro and we'll make the size 11 and we'll increase the leading a bit and you can see now we're getting that nice control over this list. Let's go to our indents and spacing. We'll make it left justified. So we get that nice right hand line. And then we'll also come into hyphenation and we'll for this we'll turn the hyphenation off and click OK. So we're kind of close to where we want to be with this bulleted list. We've got that nice slant in there. If we double click onto our title here, let's add in some title formatting. We'll use a Myriad Pro again. This time we'll go for a black. We'll increase the font size a bit. And we'll come to our spacing, a little bit of space after. And you can see now we're starting to get that nice formatting uh, for this particular page. But yeah, the key is with these List, if you want to get into slant, you need to change the text frame shape yourself. You can't use a text wrap. And then also you will need to use that M space between your bullets 
and the list um, as you're kind of working on it. So let's come out of our main title. We'll click away here and we'll come back into our bulleted list. And for this, we're just going to come into our bullets and numbering. We're going to add a different bullet in here. So we'll search for our font awesome. Actually, we don't want font awesome brands. We just want font awesome. And we'll choose this right facing arrow. We'll add that, click OK, and then we can use that as our bullet, which is kind of nice. And then we'll also add a character style for our bullet color. Nice. So you can see we've got complete control over the alignment of that slanted list using the M space um, and then changing the shape of our text frame um, with the direct selection tool. And if you have any questions about InDesign, about how to get things uh, aligned, how to work with your text, then leave a comment below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.